no, 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 no. Often seen as one of the most popular automotive guy on YouTube, Doug DeMiro is a very successful blogger and YouTuber with almost 2.5 million subscribers on his channel. In this video, we'll be going through some of the quirks, features, and facts of Doug himself. Whatever you want. Even if it's between a Ford Escort and a semi-truck. Starting off with his first quirk, or rather a very interesting fact of him, and actually this must be one of his top achievements in life, even before him getting blown up on YouTube. So yeah guys, here is a little backstory of him and how he started. Doug DeMiro was originally from Denver, Colorado, which he later moved to Atlanta, Georgia to study at Emory University, where he earned a degree in economics. Then right after graduating, Doug granted a job at Porsche Cars North America, and now I'm not exactly sure, but most people would consider this to be pretty amazing, since landing a job at any automotive company is quite tough and yet Doug has somewhat somehow made his way into one of the biggest automotive company in his industry. But hang on, that's not even the craziest part. Hear this, Doug was the first ever to break the record which he quickly rose up the ranks to become the youngest manager in the history of Porsche cars company. The, the craziest 911 of all time. Two components to this. First, I'm gonna... Secondly, during his time at Porsche, he began to write articles for various outlets such as Auto Trader and The Truth About Cars in his spare time. And you probably wonder if he still has a job or maybe Porsche has fired him because to the majority of people, being a manager at Porsche would seem to be a pretty sweet gig and a lot of people wouldn't quit if they were given an opportunity like this, right? Now get this, Doug quit his job as a vehicle allocation manager at Porsche Cars North America on January 2013 to pursue writing full time and began writing for Jalopnik. He then created a series where he would buy cars to own for a year at a time, usually voted for by the readers, which later became known as the Duck Car. Since its inception, these are the cars that he has bought. The Cadillac CTS V Wagon, Ferrari 360 Modena, Hummer H1, Nissan Skyline GTR, Aston Martin V8 Vantage, Dodge Viper GTS, Nissan S Cargo, and the Land Rover Defender 90. And there's an article on Jalopnik where he answered to one of his fans about his job of being a manager at Porsche. Here is what he said, but there's another component I always try and stress when people ask about working in the auto industry. You might not actually like it. Consider this, although I work for Porsche, undoubtedly one of the coolest companies in the industry, and although I had a cool company car, which was a 911 Carrera and a cool manager title, I spent most of my days at my desk eating Snickers, creating some if formulas in Microsoft Excel, and listening to my coworkers talk about college football. Doug even once described his experience working as a vehicle allocation manager for Porsche in North America as sitting behind a cubicle banging away at Microsoft Excel. Basically, Doug was responsible for all incoming orders of the Porsche 918 Spider sent in by dealers. Button in the center console. Push it and you can set a maximum speed so that when you're in the pit lane on a racetrack, you won't accidentally go over the speed limit. Another thing For the next one, as I have told, once Doug has resigned his job at Porsche Cars, he had his new job at the time writing full time for Jalopnik. Only then till September 11, 2013 when he began his YouTube channel and Doug uploaded his first video there on the channel on December 10 in the same year. And in an interview where he was asked on his reasons to why he started posting videos, Doug replied that really the only thought that made him decided to do YouTube was because he had bought a new car at the time, which was the Ferrari 360, and he thought that if he were going to write articles about a Ferrari, as much as people would want to read about the car, they would also want to see it too. Now what interesting is, Doug has also stated in the interview that before him started doing YouTube, not only had he never uploaded a video, but he also never really watched any YouTube at all. Main reason was once he graduated in 2010, he got a job right after, and since he got a desk job in an office, watching videos wouldn't be an option back then, all he could do in his spare time would be reading articles, and further, Doug didn't even know that he could potentially make money on YouTube. Doug used to create those videos only to be somewhat a byproduct of his articles back then. And then, you're allowed to start it. You also have to think ahead before you get gas. That's because the fuel door won't open if you turn... Then you're probably wondering how does Doug DeMuro afford so many expensive cars regarding how many expensive cars he has bought and so many of those would go up to and even over $100,000. And so I happened to find an answer to the question which he had discussed about it on his Reddit post. Alright, so I believe here is how he kind of did it I guess since he only intends to keep the cars for about a year at a time. He said he figured the depreciation on a desirable sports car would probably be next to nothing. So he could carry it over on the bank's dollars, pay only a little bit of interest, 2% or whatever, 
over the course of the year of ownership and simply sell the car on when it's time for a new duck car. Plus, it is business, so the interest and payments actually are tax deductible. Simply put, he probably is profiting off of it and gets to have fun making quirky videos doing silly stunts in each of his cars. Now lastly, as you have probably noticed, as Doug has gotten more famous over these few years, he has been borrowing more cool cars from his viewers and fans to review on his channel. And after watching so many of his videos, I remember thinking to myself, like, since he has borrowed so many cars to make his videos, what if one day Doug messed up, got into some accident and seriously ca crashed one of the cars? That would be pretty crazy considering he has made videos with a really really such high prices car that could go worth up to millions of dollars. I mean just to give you guys some example, he has made a ton of videos with Lamborghini's car, Bugatti Veyron, the new Bugatti Chiron and even this Koenigsegg Agera RS1 which he stated in the video that would cost up to 10 million dollars. Now if you were to be the owners of these hugely expensive cars, like how could you even trust literally anyone to test drive it? So in the same interview from the video that I've just shown you before, Doug has happened to address on this topic too. He kind of said that he knew that if any of his viewers got some interesting cars, he guess it's like kind of cool for them to let a YouTuber go on and review the cars. But how would you feel if your car is worth a million dollars? Now that has to be a whole nother story and that's why Doug had to get insurance. But funny thing is he has said that he has gone through a million brokers and none of them has heard of this stuff before. They even thought that he must be crazy. Now in the end he did manage to get insurance. The point is that he decided even though he will never have a loss but it's pretty important to came ready and be able to let the owners of these cars know that hey I'm insured. So yeah guys that will be it for the video today. If you have actually made it here to the end please make sure to drop a like on the video, hit subscribe and also don't forget to ring that notification bell next to it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace and I'll catch us later.